Hey dear friends, hello, I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, it's less than two weeks till Christmas and I had a great recipe I wanted to share with you. I made a batch of Christmas jam to take to a party for a club that I belong to. I made some little quarter pint jars uh, to pass out and I think everybody enjoyed them. I had a little bit of leftover and it is delicious. This jam is a mixture of strawberry and cranberry with a little hint of spices added to it. And I just put all the ingredients together, brought it to a boil. Um, once it reached the boil, I let it boil for a minute. I'm gonna take you through all this, you know, and show you as well, but I'm just going to summarize at the beginning here. And um, after it's brought to a boil for a minute, you remove the heat, we stir in some liquid pectin bring it back to a boil and then jar it up. And at that point, you can either put it in the refrigerator to use within the next uh, couple of weeks here at the holidays, or you can water bath can it so it will keep indefinitely on the shelf. So the ingredients you're going to need is four pounds of frozen strawberries. And we're going to also need um, about a bag and a half here. We're going to need a pound of cranberries. I happen to still have some cranberries in my market here, and I use slightly over a pound. This, uh, this package is three-fourths of a pound, and I use part of another package, about a half of another package, so I use a little bit more cranberries. My reasoning is that the cranberries tend to have that natural pectin in them, and I thought it would help the jam to gel more easily. And then we're going to need nine cups of sugar, However you want to combine your sugar, you can use brown sugar, you can use white sugar. And what I made in my previous batch, I used a four pound bag of white sugar. Four pounds is approximately equal to nine cups. And then the spices we're going to need, we're going to need a little bit of ground cloves, a little bit of allspice, ground allspice, a little bit of pure vanilla extract, and a little bit of cinnamon. And we're going to add the zest from two oranges, or about two tablespoons of zest. So let's get started on this project. But before we get started, I want to just uh, talk to you about my next video that I'm planning to do. You know, I'm nearly out of my vanilla extract. I went to uh, Costco today and I saw you could get an 8-ounce bottle of vanilla extract, the Kirkland brand, for $11.99. And I know that that's a cheaper price as compared to recent years. Like two or three years ago, vanilla was selling for ridiculous amounts, like $30, $40 a jar. At that time, people got interested in making their own vanilla extracts. And I was interested in making my own vanilla extract, but I never did it because I wasn't retired at the time and I thought it would take a lot of time. Well, let me tell you, the only time that it takes is the time of waiting. The time of making your jars of vanilla extract is very, very quick. And the hardest part about it is getting the labels correct and getting them on the right bottles. So I'm going to do in my next video a, a quick presentation. These are all the liquors I went out and bought. And these are the ones we're going to use. Rum is one of the spirits recommended for making vanilla extract. So I've got several varieties of rum. Um, also bourbon. So we've got Jack Daniels, and let's see, I have spiced rum. Coconut rum came highly recommended. Of course, vodka is a good basic liquor you can use, a basic spirit. I'm going to try brandy. I'm going to try a basic white rum, and I've got two varieties of white rum. And I'm also going to try this uh, tequila añejo and see how that comes out. So without belaboring the point too much, be on the lookout for my next video and we'll have fun. I'm waiting for some uh, decorative bottles to come in. You can use whatever kind of bottles you like, as long as you've got a good sealing lid. And I have some vanilla beans on order. They should be coming in in the next day or two along with the jars. So we'll get to that as soon as I get all the supplies in. Okay, so let's get back to our wonderful Christmas jam. Now, when I made this for our club event, I used uh, quarter pint jars instead of half pint jars. And I was able to get from this particular recipe, I believe it was about 16 quarter pints. So I'm assuming if you double that up, that would be eight half pints. I have my uh, 
my canning pot here where I'm going to water bath can, which means I'll have to fill these jars to cover them with an inch or two of water to bring to a rolling boil. But this particular Presto, this is my pressure canner, and you can also use it as a, um, as a water bath if you'd like. And this holds actually 13 half pint jars, so I could the type I'm using are not the fat ones that are decorative for the, um, although I could use the fatter jars, but this is the slimmer jars. These are eight ounce or half pint jars, and I could just use a smaller, uh, depends how much I get. If I get only, if I only need uh, about eight jars, I'll probably use a smaller pot to, um, to process these, but if I get 10 or 12, then I'll just go ahead and use this pot. So I'm going to clean my jars, uh, fill the pot with water, get these jars warmed. Then you have your choice on how you do the fruit. Look at those beautiful cranberries. You can take these and you can process them before you put them in to start cooking, and that's what I'm going to do. Or you can wait till they're partially cooked and then use an immersion blender or use a masher and mash them up. But I am going to let these thaw out a little bit more and then I'm gonna just uh, use my food processor and chop them up before I even start cooking because I find that to be easier for me personally. So what I do when I have new jars, I remove the lid, set them aside, and the only concern is there might possibly some, be some manufacturing residue or chemicals or dirt or something inside these jars. So I'm gonna wash them with a little bit of soap and water and rinse them real well and put them back in the stock pot so they can be sterilized and warmed up to be ready to be filled. I love these Kerr jars. I think they're very classy and elegant. Just simple, clear jars, no patterns. Uh, they're a little bit less expensive than the other fancier jam jars. So when I'm giving them away, I don't feel so bad like, gosh, I won't get my jar back. I mean, these are so easy to replace. They're not that expensive at Walmart. I think you can get about a dozen for $8 or so. First thing I'm going to do with these berries is rinse them, inspect them. We're gonna remove any that look like this or any that are, you know, starting to get too soft. This batch actually looks pretty good. And by rinsing them, here's one that's sort of too soft. See, that's a little not good. So I'm gonna throw that one away. And the process of rinsing them also will remove stems You'll be surprised when you drain this water out, you'll see a few stems go in there. And you don't have to remove these, as a matter of fact, these light colored berries, these are good because they're not quite ripe and they have more pectin, so they'll help your uh, jam to set up better. So don't worry about them if they don't look nice and red. They're just fine, just like this. This actually looks like a nice bag of berries. I don't see too many that I'm going to have to discard, just two so far. Okay, well on closer inspection, after I put the camera down, I looked through the berries, the cranberries, and I found uh, about a dozen or two that are past their prime, that were soggy or mushy, or just not as good as they should be. So these I'm going to discard. I'm sure companies that make commercial cranberry sauce or jellies and jams do use these uh, mushy berries that are past their prime, but that's the good thing about home canning. You can get rid of gross stuff like this that would otherwise be in your food. I just don't feel comfortable using berries that are going bad. They're just mushy. They're not firm anymore. And my feeling is they're probably harboring some sort of bacteria because of the or fungus or whatever because of the process of going bad. So these are gonna be discarded. And as you go through your berries, you may find an occasional little stem here or a little piece of leaf or something, and you can just pull those out and discard those also. Okay, I do not own a food processor, so I'm going to be using this. Uh, this is my immersion blender and it has attachments to do food processing. So we're going to put the cranberries in here, pulse them up. They don't have to be pureed, just sort of chopped. Okay, so we're gonna do that to all these berries. Okay, 
my strawberries are still pretty well frozen. They're going to be a little more difficult to chop, but you can wait till they're more thawed and they'll chop a little more easily. But let's see how this goes. <laughs> going down easy so they did not there's still big hunks in there but that's okay the bulk of it is chopped up pretty well so I'm going to do that with the rest of my four pound bag of strawberries and we'll be back when they're all chopped up and I've been finding as I go along pieces of, of uh, leaves and a little bit of debris and even a little bit of dirt so you do have to check your frozen berries and the good time to do that is as you're putting them into the chopper one by one Good chance to inspect them. See, you get the occasional little piece that looks like it's past its prime, even though it's been frozen. Since these have been frozen, they're going to mush up pretty easily, but I like to chop them before I put them in. It just makes them a little bit easier to, uh, to handle everything than trying to mash them when they're hot. So, of course, when you're doing your own canning, you're your own inspector, and you can you can find and remove par the little parts and pieces that you don't want to be in your food. And you know when you buy commercial jams and jellies, nobody's doing this. They're just dumping all these, uh, you know, huge batches of strawberries into big vats. And whatever's in there is in there. But you at home can control what's in there and you can take out what you don't want in your food. Okay, I've got everything together here. I've got jars simmering in the canner here. I have my favorite pot to use for making jams. Uh, this is an anodized aluminum pot and it tends to distribute the heat more evenly and less uh, with less hot spots than a stainless steel pot. Then we've got our four pounds of chopped strawberries, slightly over a pound of chopped cranberries. I have a half a teaspoon of cinnamon, a fourth of a teaspoon of allspice, a half a teaspoon of ground cloves, I have two teaspoons of vanilla extract, and I have about three tablespoons of lemon juice. And my husband, being the dear sweetheart that he is, asked me what he could do to help, and I told him he could go to the store and buy me a five-pound sack of sugar. So this four-pound bag of granulated sugar would be the equivalent of nine cups of sugar. So we're going to put everything together into the pot here. We're going to Add everything in there, but we're going to leave the pectin for later. We are, we're using liquid pectin. If you're not using liquid pectin and you're using a uh, granulated or dry pectin, then you would have to put the pectin in before you put the sugar. But we're not going to do that because that's not what I'm doing today. I'm using the liquid pectin. Okay, so our strawberries. Cranberries, vanilla extract, lemon juice, and we'll ha have all the exact uh, measurements of everything and put it in the description box below. Ground cloves. Ground allspice, ground cinnamon, and you need to add the zest from two oranges or about two tablespoons of orange zest. It gives it a really awesome flavor. And it sounds like a lot, but it's what is needed. Four pounds or nine cups of sugar. So you could use brown sugar if you wanted to, so either or, it doesn't matter. Brown sugar will give you a nice, a richer flavor if you want to use that. So next we're going to put on our heat. We're going to stir this and bring it to a boil. It's probably take five, ten minutes. Now it seems like a lot of sugar to put four pounds of sugar into this batch, but we have a lot of strawberries here. And strawberries do not have much natural pectin, so we need this sugar to help the pectin to gel. And it's going to cook down, and you'll be surprised how wonderful it's going to be. And we've got those cranberries in there too to sort of aid in the gelling process. 
So when I made this the other night, I was pleasantly surprised. It was so delicious. And the, the spice is just a small amount, just a hint of the allspice and the clove and the cinnamon. So you don't really taste it. It doesn't, it doesn't hit you. It's very subtle. So this is a delicious jam. I think it could be good any time of the year, but especially at the holidays. I broke out a new jar of vanilla extract and added another teaspoon of vanilla extract into here because I'm crazy about vanilla. Like I said, we're going to be making vanilla extract in our next video, and I'm looking forward to that. I've never done it before. It's going to be easy. I think waiting and waiting for six months to a year for it to uh, mature and be able to be tasted is going to be the hardest part. I actually wanted to make vanilla extract to give for Christmas gifts this year, but I just never got around to it. And of course it needs time to uh, process and to sit and to ripen. So I figure if I start now, that'll give it a full year before next Christmas. And see how our sugar is more or less melting into the fruits here. You can't really it doesn't really seem like so much once it starts to melt in. And because we did our pre-processing, we don't have too many big hunks of fruit that need to be squished. Just a few pieces here and there. So that's a lot easier in my opinion. Well, this is going to take a little while to come up to a boil because the strawberries are still basically half frozen. So it's going to take a little while. Okay, I had to add a little bit more lemon juice because I was supposed to have added a fourth of a cup and I only added about uh, three tablespoons. A fourth of a cup would be four tablespoons. I love how the cranberries look in here against the strawberries, the dark and the light red. Very Christmassy. Okay, so I'm gonna give this a little extra crushing here. coming to a boil and what you want to get this to is a point where even when you're stirring you can't stop this boil you can't stir it down as they say so we're starting to get to that point we're not there yet this has been about 15 minutes that I've been cooking this on the stove top here So we can see it's got a little bubbling action going at the sides. But we're not to a rolling boil yet. And because the batch that I made last week was just a tad loose, I am going to add a little more liquid pectin, but we're not to the point yet where we're gonna add the pectin. We're still waiting for this to reach a boil. It's been about 20 minutes and we're not there yet. But remember, we did start with frozen berries. I have got to say, this really does smell like Christmas. I guess it's the combination of the cranberry, strawberry, cinnamon, vanilla, allspice, clove. It's just delicious. Really giving my house a wonderful scent. 
Okay, it's beginning to come to a boil and a boil that I can't stir down. So now we're going to time this for one minute at a rolling boil like this. Our jam was at a rolling boil for one minute. I've turned off the heat. We stirred it continuously while it was boiling. And now with the heat off, we're going to add our pectin. So I've cut the corner off the pectin. And we're going to squeeze the contents into our jam. We're gonna squeeze really well to get all the pectin out of here. So I'm going to add four packets of liquid pectin like this, simply because simply because my previous batch is just a little too soupy for my taste and I don't want it to be like a syrup, I want it to be a jam. So we'll turn on our heat. We're going to bring this back up to a rolling boil and let it boil for another one minute. You don't want to overboil this when the pectin is in there because if it boils too long, the pectin will break down and then it won't gel like you would like it to. So it's kind of a delicate balance. Okay, we're getting there, it's starting to boil. Not quite to the rolling boil that we want, but almost. So right now I can stir this boil down, so that doesn't count as a rolling boil. Okay, we're getting up there to the rolling boil stage. It's got to look like it's ready to bubble over onto your stove. And there we go. So we are going to time this for one minute. And stir, stir and let this boil for one minute. That's a rolling boil, folks, right there. So I've set my timer for a minute. We're gonna just keep stirring. It's really, really super hot now. Okay, our minute is up. We're going to turn off the heat, get our jars, and get them filled. And this should be about ready. So we're, we're removing our hot jars and putting them on an insulated surface. We can fill them. And the reason we, the reason we heat the jars first is so that uh, if we had a room temperature jar and we filled it with some hot jam real rapidly, that would you would stand a chance of possibly having the jar crack. So that's why we preheat the jars. So 
So I'm hoping this jam will set up a little better than my last batch did. It should start to set up as it cools. And we're going to fill each jar to within a quarter inch headspace, which is approximately one of those, one of these giant scoops. This is a one cup scoop. So that should be just about enough to fill a jar with one scoop. That's pretty convenient for this session. I still want to watch because I don't want to overfill. It looks pretty thin at this point, but it will set up. If not, we'll have strawberry syrup for our pancakes. But that's really not what I'm wanting, so I hope it sets up pretty well. Wow, this is a really huge batch of jam. I may, I may have enough to fill all these jars. Alrighty, we want to cl 
clean off the top edges of the jars here so that there'll be a good seal when we put the lids on. And there was a little bit of splatter, so we did get some jam up on the top there. Just a little bit, not a lot. So we're going to do that to every jar. This, this really made a huge batch of jam. I filled these 13 half pints, and I have another two half pints that I'm uh, warming, although they won't fit in my water bath canner for processing, so either I'll have to do a second batch or maybe I'll just keep these second two jars or last two jars in the refrigerator. We'll see. First, we need to get these 13 jars into the canner. So we're going to get a lid and a ring and screw these on finger tight and get them back into the canner. You've got a little fancier jars here. Okay, we have our 13 jars in the water bath. They're covered by over an inch of water. We need an inch to two inches covering them. I'm gonna turn up the heat, and when this reaches a rolling boil, then we'll start timing them for the 10 minutes that's required at my elevation. Okay, the 10 minutes is up. I've turned off the heat under the jars, and we're going to Wait another 5-10 minutes and then we'll remove them for the canner and let them cool. So here we have our 13 beautiful jars of Christmas jam. So I hope you try this out. Let me know what you think and we will talk to you again next time. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. See you later. Bye.